where you've seen uh, seals or killer whales, and they find a school of fish. And what happens? Well, they find the school of fish, and the predators see the fish, and what happens is working together, they start swimming around the school of fish. Now, the fish see the predators out there. They know they're predators, and they want to get away. So if the predator starts swimming in a circle, what happens? Well, the fish start swimming in a circle, too, because they're trying to get away. And so what happens? Well, then the predators are very clever, you see, because God designed them that way. Uh, then they start getting a little closer and a little closer and a little closer. And the school of fish starts turning a little tighter, a little tighter, a little tighter, until suddenly it looks like a tornado of fish in the water. And then the seals, the killer whales, taking turns, one will turn at a time, go through the school with the jaws going like this, right? Now, think with me for just a second. Is this survival of the fittest, or is this survival of the luckiest? Well, it's survival of the luckiest. If you're in the way of those jaws, it doesn't matter whether you're the biggest, smartest animal in the school of fish. If you're in the way of those jaws, you're gone. And so survival of the fittest is a totally meaningless terminology. It doesn't mean anything. What well, does not prove evolution. Matter of fact, it refutes evolution. And so when evolutionists use these terms, survival of the fittest, you have to say, wait a minute, really? I don't think so. That once you realize the material that I've been sharing with you, you'll realize that survival of the fittest refutes evolution and proves creation. Thank you.